Dunkin' is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin' with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin'. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew. You might have noticed a change in your neighborhood lately. Yep, Sprint stores are now T-Mobile stores. Now that Sprint is T-Mobile, you get more coverage, value, and benefits than ever before. We've invested billions to bring our 5G from big cities to small towns across America. And great coverage is just the start. From high-speed mobile hotspot data to weekly deals and giveaways, our customers get tons of great benefits. Head to your new T-Mobile store to learn more. Qualifying service and capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some uses may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. Some they call it functional alcoholism, but if you know anything about Ben, he's got vision with precision microphones and a tinkle of derision. You're about to hear what beer can be. It's time for Barley and Me. Welcome to Barley and Me. I'm your host, Ben Rice. This is episode 153. We're here today at Urban Roots Brewing in Sacramento. With us today are special guests, so many of them. We've got Tara Nuren, brewer journalist and the author of an upcoming book. A Woman's Place is in the Brew House. Tara, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. I'm so happy to see you. This was a really nice surprise. Yeah. Uh, you were on episode 135. I do remember that. I looked that up before we started recording. Uh, when you were in the... Uh, uh, editing process, getting ready to publish, and now this book is coming out. That's right. It is coming out September 21st, which I believe is... If we promise this correctly, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and um, this was my first event, my first official book event today. That's crazy. Here in Sacramento. Such a nice, receptive, welcoming crowd, and really happy to start out here, because I have no memory of being here ever in my life. Though I think I was here as a baby, but this is like ostensibly my first time. That's crazy. Crazy. And also with us, Herlinda Haras from KSRO's uh, Brew Haha Radio Drive Time Talk Show. <laughs> How's it going? Good, uh, good, good. Glad to be here in Sacramento, having some good barbecue and uh, some really good beers here too. Oh yeah, Indeed. I was uh, shocked when you were introduced to Peter Hoey. I'm like, you guys didn't already know each other. I might have met. I might have been introduced to him um, at like a CBC or a GABF or a party or something like that. But I don't think so, though. Uh, Rob has been on from Pangea has been on. You know that uh, now is a you know, partner here at Urban Roots um, has been on my show. But and of course I fangirled him because I love Pangea. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole Ernie took. Well, we all went with like the CCBA. The beer festival, but Nicole Ernie's like, you have to come and check this out. And I've been he- actually the first time I came to Urban Roots was also with Nicole Ernie, <laughs> <laughs> their own personally uh, tour guide there. But yeah, I don't think I've actually met him in person. That's so weird to me. I know it is weird. What a nice guy though, too. Yeah, he um, is. He yeah. so is. Yes. Yeah. And that third voice you're hearing is Melissa McCann. Uh, founder of Women's International Beer Summit. Nice. That is exactly right. And, of course, uh, the Queen of Beer homebrewing competition. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about. And by we, I mean not me at all. (laughs) Girl power. One one, one or triple powers activate. (laughs) Yeah, because I think last time you were on, Tara, we uh, had a conversation where I also just was like, I think you guys can just talk and everything will be fine. And it turned out great. It That's actually what happened with the summit, too. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It was Tara so fun. Yes, yeah. yes. Tara and uh, Orlinda were on the Inter- International Beer Summit last April. So we're looking forward to having them on the 2022 summit as well. I think I what wait. we might do, actually, is have a part two of our conversation with... I agree. Was um, So Herlinda <laughs> and I have been besties for several years now, and we do a lot of really really cool traveling locally and internationally and um melissa said 
why don't you guys just get on and tell some stories? And we were like, oh, okay, I think we could probably do that. Do that. And so we told travel stories. <laughs> five so. hours later. <laughs> <laughs> five hours. <laughs> but also, it was like a lot of it was about, like, people wanted to know how we got into traveling for beer. Right, right. And, you know, journalism and... Uh, you know, and judging beer as well. Mm-hmm. And I judge beer and food in a bunch of different countries. I just got back from Finland for judging their national competition. Right. But people like that was like the big question everybody wanted to know, especially with Tara, you know, Forbes magazine and, you know, writing and writing a book. They were like, how did you do that? You know, mm-hmm. what were, you know, yeah. and so that actually went back to college. <laughs> right. She went to school. She has a master's in that. I do not. And I just got really <laughs> lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I totally want another interview where you're just talking about your adventures together because it was so fun. And there's fun. Just so many great stories on there. Wait till we go to Belgium. I know, right? Oh, and I may have to join in <laughs> yeah, that one yeah. as well. But that I also want a separate great. session on just the book because there's so much going on there and the release is happening. So we can actually maybe give away some books at the summit and just maybe get some, you know, personally signed, you know, books for everyone. I think that would be fabulous. So I really do want as many people as possible to read this book, not because I think I'm going to get rich because I think I'm going to get poor actually (laughs) Mm. writing my first book. But, um, you know, there's so many people and places and stories that are so important to get out mm-hmm. um, that have been so overlooked for millennia that, you know, the more people, men and women and otherwise, um, can read it, I think it would really elevate, help elevate the conversation around beer and who brews it, who benefits from it, how it's marketed. Where it's um, going with women, too. Where it's going, especially, yeah, with, like, you know, everybody wants to talk about the Me Too stuff that's happening, luckily, very overdue right now in craft beer. And they're just just conversations after – they're just – there's so much opportunity for conversation. And and, and the point of the book really is to – well, there are several points, but one of them is to sort of – explore culture through beer so even if somebody's not necessarily a beer person there's so much to learn about the women's role in society and just how society has evolved evolved societies plural um over the you know for the past two hundred thousand years like there's just it's page turning, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, it's uh, running parallel to just human history, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, like you see royalty rise and fall, and it kind of all falls in line with how that stuff's progressing as well. So, so, so true. And to see um, the parallels between the way, the, the small minded ways people were thinking thousands of years ago, and to see modern examples that absolutely parallel, huh. you know, the details are different, but the story is the same. Yeah, that's, that's happening in a few different realms. Huh. Weird. <laughs> I'll say. And then leave it at that. Right. A few different realms. It's like, this story sounds familiar from, I don't know, like 50, 60 years ago. Their stories are fairly similar. Sure. So right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it just is. a common thread that goes through the fabric of life, you know, yeah. and, and it's just it just keeps flowing through. So and I, and I guess the hope with all of this stuff that we're al- talking about directly and alluding to <laughs> is that we can be two steps forward, one step back instead of one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. And, and um, you know, the work that the three of us do, you know, as women and beer I think in our own ways, each of us really is pushing the narrative forward, creating Mm -hmm. more opportunities for exposure, for one, for women in beer. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I have no sage point after that. Exposure and equality as much as possible. I mean, I'll go back to Finland again about that. Um, Both Tara and I have both been to Finland for beer stuff um, and, you know, uh, travel but I always delve deep into wherever I go. And one of the great things about Finland that we could learn all learn a lot about that. It's a very, like it's all, that country is all about equality. And they also had, they were the first country to allow um, women to be um, in, in elections for vote. Hmm. Yeah. And 
they have a woman prime minister right now, but it's not their first. Right. Unlike us, who's still you know a little behind. Spinning our wheels on it. Yeah. Right. But they are actually, they are very much about going ahead and you know calling calling things out. And they're like light years ahead of us, but like except for that when I look ahead, like are we going? Are we going to roll backwards? Or are we going to are we going to get like that? Yeah. Mm. We're pushing a boulder up a hill. Are we going to make it over the crest, or is it just right. going to be toppling back down mm. on us? Is a fun fun thought to have as you fall asleep at night. <laughs> Why people have to vote. <laughs> yeah. Right. Keep voting. Yeah. And, and don't be afraid of change. Change is usually good. Not always, but like I think the real right. issue is I'm scared of change and I'm scared of losing power and authority. And how much do most people really have of either of those in the grand scheme of things? So uh, anyway, the point is you wrote a book. And uh, here's what I like. I just thought of this while we were talking. Is that uh, Herlinda? You are on the radio quite frequently, so you can get your daily dose of information. Yeah. And then you're like, I want to learn more. Oh, there's this book that we can get from Tara Nur. And it's like, well, now let's have a big old celebration. We've got a beer yeah, Let's with do that. <laughs> it's a great thread. Yeah, I look like at me go. There it is. It's all woven in. Yeah. yeah. Well, and every time Tara has been in town or called in, I I make sure. And as soon as she said that, I'm like, and she's going to be writing a book, and she's writing a book, and she's finished a book, and now she's about to do a book tour. And we've been talking, talking, talking about the places we've been and the people we've met and the people, like, you know, that are part of her research, like, every time. And that's, like, and even the stories that you write about are, like, a fabric of that book also. I mean, the people we've met, I mean, the people we meet in beer all the time Mm -hmm. of any gender are just... Yes, men and women, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Crazy inspiring. I don't know, like, I'm just in awe of so many beer people. And then, you know, choosing specific women to enter to highlight for the book means I'm choosing them for a particular reason, whether they were pioneers in the early days. <laughs> um, we, we have some... Uh, <laughs> we have a casualty over we have here a, somewhere. <laughs> a restaurant casualty. Um, just to learn about the, the perseverance that these women have had right. and, you know, that they, a lot of them in the early days in the 80s who were working in beer were coming from logging, like, Ski, right. re- ski patrol rescue, like yeah. landscaping engineers, you know, just the the, the tough, the yeah, hardy, the yeah. hardy, yeah. right, mm-hmm. and just the 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 freaking intelligence of the people we've gotten to meet and inter- and that I've gotten to interview along the way are just like I want everybody to know about them. They're so they're so impressive. And creativity uh, in these women also. And then there's like Judy Ashworth. Yep. Tara was just telling that she actually read an excerpt from her book about Judy and ha- and then told did a little like opening for that as well about how Judy was the first one to you know do Christmas in July. Well, she she owned a pub in the 80s, one of the craft. <laughs> First craft beer bars in the country. What did she call it? The kick out the bud party? Oh, buy the bud party. So Judy had this East Bay brewery in the 80s. And one of the, I mean, not a brewery, sorry. the, the One of the first beer bars. The and pub, like her yeah. Linda's saying, mm-hmm. she was one of the first bars in the country. Pro- actually, probably the first bar to stop serving macro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On tap, she had Christmas in July. She did meet the brewer. She cut out, she prohibited smoking. In her bar, she put what's the decorative touch? The, oh, the, oh, flowers. the flowers, the flowers in between the urinals. The men's are fresh cut flowers, <laughs> fresh cut flowers every day to try to create, cultivate respect and education surrounding the beer. And um, I didn't know about Judy until a couple years ago when I was researching and happened to come across her. And and we keep talking about Judy. You know, today, because, you know, she's a Northern California fixture in beer, and she was so influential in the types of activities we come to expect now from beer bars. Yeah. Outside of, like, the California homebrewing community. Almost nothing. No one knows right. who she is. Never yeah. heard of her. And she's still, Judy's still supporting these young brewers. I was just at a party yes. at her house. Yes. And the revision guys come from Nevada. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. they Jeremy, come cruising yeah. in with kegs of fresh revision. They just drove there for the party. And at her house. At her house. In her garage in yeah. the Oasis. And, and they're tapping fresh yep. beer. And yep. we're just having a great time. But 
And she's and when Tara and I were there at her house when she was researching the, the book, she was like, "Oh, you have to try this one. You know, this is a new one. Not like, oh, this one I used to serve. You know, that this I used. To. And then no. she, did, you know, she did have this great reverence for British beer styles and and local you know beers as well. But she's still no looking at the she young knows ones. what's going yeah. on. That's why yeah. I told you as like people and around here call her the beerological mother yeah. of <laughs> you know in California. That yeah. that's her nickname with the breweries, the brewers around here. So yeah, she's like seventy nine or eighty. I need to be careful because oh, she just had her eightieth birthday. Yeah, it was eighty. Okay, so I thought uh, okay, said, I was yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Um, to some extent, I think it takes women to talk about women and you can substitute women in for, you know, it takes African Americans to talk about African Americans, etc. Hispanic, Hispanic, that, whatever, yeah. you know, Support. gender nonconforming, um, because, you know, the gatekeeping that exists in archival historical writings, and it's not intentional necessarily, but it's that the narratives are written by the people in power, the people well, who have Well, a lot, access. Of, right. lot of it was intentional. Yeah. And I then, mean, let's talk, I mean, that's, there's yeah. some serious let's intentional. Let's just be honest. There's like, it's like the Bible, like things being cut out. You know, let's talk about intentional uh, men cutting women out of some of these things. And not just women, gen- genders and ethnicities and tribes and all kinds of stuff, too. Yeah, um, and yeah. so without women, like, we'll just keep it to women for now, because that's, that's what right. we're talking about, but, you know, it applies across the board. Um, Even now, with voting, they're still trying to cut, cut you know, that's intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You ha- have your language you use to make it seem like it's, no, this is just by chance. It's like, well, what, what are the odds that it keeps happening yeah. this exact way? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. So the, so the more women, for instance, that thank you for having the three of us on your podcast, for instance... We're we as women are going to be more conscious of telling women's stories, and of course there are men doing that work too. Yeah, and more ben, often ben, than and not. Yeah. It's, and Ben's it's a, women. been a big supporter of yes. Yes. women in beer since the moment I met him. Sure. Yeah, it's true. But <laughs> yeah. moving on. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's good. I mean, I, yeah. I want to get kudos to a guy doing a right. a, 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 a podcast, and as soon as it, I mean, he he comes to to the re- reading of a book about a women's you know beer history mm-hmm. on purpose and he brings his recording equipment because I want to talk to them well just in case <laughs> just in case well, yeah. just in prepared. case we had every, anything to say right yeah <laughs> right. like well, I don't know what their schedule is after this but oh, maybe that's, yeah. that's right. why I didn't bring it in the brewery with me I'm like it's in my car but then Hernandez like do you have your stuff I'm like of course I do yeah, <laughs> yeah I knew I'm like yeah. and I knew I'm like I'm thinking like this is a good opportunity. I'll, I mean, I, you know, I I had my yeah. stuff. I've been want to talk to you guys as well. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, and when I was on your podcast the last time, you had me paired with a woman who is a sex worker advocate. Interesting. And we talked about the the parallel history again. Oh. Because wow. these things all run parallel. It's just the same stuff over and over again. Mm-hmm. But yes, carry on. Yeah. Well, exactly right. So she was talking about historical oppression of sex workers. And I was talking about the parts in the book where um, usually it's when religion comes in to try to squeeze women out yeah. of the na- brewing narrative. Which religion is about money, a lot of it. Um, and how sex was used against women. There were stereotype lies made up, just like where the sexual is the unnecessary sexualization of women was used against us to keep us away from brewing and keep us out of accessing resources. Is yeah. that a fair yeah, sort of pretty much explanation? Like if, if you thought that a woman was going to be able to go out on her own at some point and not need a man, like, no, 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 <laughs> please. We will control the money. Thank you. And like, you're a prostitute. Yeah. We're yeah. It's like, it's like, you. Oh, you wanted autonomy of your body? No, thank you. You wanted to make money using your skill set? No, no, no. Get back in the kitchen and, and do it for free for my family. Yeah. Just uh, over and over again, anytime there's a chance where women might have like a little bit more authority in the world, they're like, no, 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 bash this down. Which is why Fun. her book is also not just a woman's places in the brew house, but a history of a forgotten history, a forgotten history of alewives, Brewsters, which is, which is and, and CEOs. CEOs. There we go. <laughs> and those, yeah, and those CEOs teamwork. Like so, like you know, Natalie um, Chalurza from Russian River Brewing. Is, is in the book. You've also got Carol Stout, who's 
famous in the Pennsylvania area near where you, Tara's from is in the book. Mariah Calgion. I was going to yeah. say Mariah. Yeah. Co-founder of Dogfish Head, um, early craft brewery owners, Irene Fermat, for instance, uh, Full Sail. She started Full Sail mm. in nice. Oregon, mm. for it. instance. See, I, mean, I, didn't know that either. I didn't know a woman started Full Sail until yeah. she was like, I need, well, I'm going to, well, I want to do, you know, she wants to do, some, we're going to be doing some book signings. She's like, well, no, I want to be at Full Sail because Irene was, I was there, and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't realize a woman had started right. Full Sail. Yeah. yeah. And we got awesome. Sierra from... Sierra Nevada. Sierra from Sierra Nevada. I mean, on and on and on. Deb yeah. Carey from New Glarus comes to mind as yeah. an early um, woman who she hired. You know, Dan Carey is a phenomenal brewer who's been la- lauded forever. Her husband. But no, no, no. I'm sorry. I am getting confused. So Deb started the brewery and Dan, her husband, came up, you know, once she had sort of gotten all the paperwork and approvals. <laughs> Irene from Full Sail, Jamie Emerson is her husband. He's also a famous brewer, has won a million awards over the years. She, she founded the brewery, got some investors, hired Jamie as her brewer out of big beer, and then married him. <laughs> yeah, you went earlier, nice. you were like, boom. Yeah, like, yeah there yeah. you go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, you've got... Uh, Lost Coast as well. Right. right. Yeah. 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 There's, right. There's, Barbara Groom. Like yep. when you think about it, there's just so many. That totally. When you think about like the first like 20, 30 breweries in the U.S., like, oh, a lot of these were actually women yes. doing this. But then and then we still were like, men run brewing. I know. <laughs> it's so true. And I mean, part of that is because, you know, usually it's the man who's the brewer. And so that the brewer is the face of the franchise. Gets, yeah. Gets, takes care but of her face. book is like about place. how women were the brewers for like starting like what 200,000 years ago the Sumerians so she before starts the Sumerians. even before that yeah so the Hemden and Kasi Sumerian Sumerian yeah yep. okay but we start pre-civilization oh, that's right, hunter gatherers looking at hunter gatherers how beer was probably discovered at that point what the role of women probably was before we ever civilized, you know, came together and settled around a, an agrarian society, you know, to grow grain, whether for bread or beer, it starts. It starts like two hundred thousand years ago. Yeah, and then and then comes to the present and looks forward. Like it was really nice today here at Urban Roots. There were a couple of female beer tenders and managers who snuck away from the bar for a little while and it was nice to be able to like actually point to them and say like okay well so women have been kicked out of brewing for millennia but thanks to the invention we'll say of craft beer we now have more and more and more and more women coming into it and here you three ladies are and and like again like we said at the beginning here we are the three of us and I'm talking too much so somebody else no you're something. just yeah. you're doing great <laughs> well, and those girls were, those, those ladies that, that were working when I came up to you know get my beer and she was telling me how excited she was that you were you know coming here mm-hmm. and doing yeah. this talk I mean she was like super excited like I, I was like really glad to see that and uh, that is a reaction I'm getting a lot <laughs> she's and, like, and she's like 25 it's awesome right and there's there's just this like I feel like there's this <laughs> I don't know if that you're filling can you a translate? void. I can't. <laughs> you're, you're filling it's a void. The excitement with this book. is just yeah. like finally, yeah. finally, yeah. kind of like what you were talking about when we had the talk just a few minutes ago about how women were saying everything's fine. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the question comes about from Brienne and Brave Noise, and. All of a sudden, women felt comfortable sharing their story. And as soon as that few people stepped up and said, uh, here's what happened, all of a sudden this, I'm just going to say it, fucking avalanche. Yeah, of well, so you reached the tipping point. People were willing and they felt finally a safe space to say, me too. This happened. And it was... I, I just feel like all of it is, is it's such a catalyst, you know, all of us finally stepping up and saying, how are you doing? You know, what's happening? 
how are you? How is this going? And finally, women are feeling comfortable telling their story. That's such a nice point. And in listening to you say that, I feel like a little bit of that, just that, that part about how are you doing, maybe um, needed to come out of the time and place that it did. Like, mm-hmm. I think this Me Too reckoning was decades in yeah. the making. I, decades. Someone say I centuries. Agree. I agree. <laughs> centuries. <laughs> so. And yet, the, this aspect of, like, I think in the pandemic, people I have too. been talking more oh. about, like, check, like, how yeah. are you? Yeah. You know, right. And, and right. So I, I totally agree. It's, yeah, it's so like, do you miss brewing? It's like, not really. Why? Oh, because this thing kept yeah. happening at work or well, whatever it is. I loved how Julia Hertz said, and I, Julia Hers, and I really appreciate it, how she said, like, the Women's International Beer Summit was kind of a catalyst for what happened with Rat Magnet and Brienne. But I don't want to take any credit for that. But I love how maybe it created a safe space to have that conversation i want brienne to have all of that to herself you know as far as what she did and what she created and i'm just so thankful that it happened and we're able to finally have that conversation i'm curious what what did julia say well the timing of it all we did the women's international beer summit Late April, right. and then all of a sudden, this happened with Brienne. June, and she put no. That was in May, and May. then yeah. all of a sudden, these this conversation started, and it was just like poof, you know. And then it just blew up into I don't even know how many, like fifteen hundred responses in like less the, than twenty four yeah. hours, and, and a lot of resignations. And yeah. it was it was so interesting, and i love how she wants to give us credit as part of the catalyst to it all but i just i don't want to take any credit for that at all i want that all to be brave noise and i want that to go forward and get that beer brewing for um the benefit of the women affected by this i feel like it was so waiting to happen Mm -hmm. and i'm sorry i'm gonna say i'm gonna Put a gross image out there, but it's like a zit that needed to pop. Right, a boil. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. totally. It was boil time for it to be, to be lanced. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was time. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe the women's beer summit was like create the start of the safe space. But I, I'm, I don't want any credit for that at all. I want that all to be on Brienne and what she was able to create on yeah. her own. I think it's just really tearing down the stigma because there's a lot of stigma of being a victim and not much stigma t- uh, to being the uh, perpetrator you know <laughs> like when you would come forward in the 90s and stuff like that you would be stigmatized oh, yeah. and then the right, other person would be right. able to do carry on with whatever they're like oh guys will be guys yeah, and right. so I think there's been, been a steady progression of like hey maybe we should stop victim blaming and moving through that right. I think a lot of the programs within the liquor industry have been helpful in moving it forward. Like, if you're going to say, I don't want to be the person who did this, like, well, we could pass the buck down to the Pink Boot Society. We're like, hey, there is a community of women brewers. Mm-hmm. that We're all experiencing right. the same thing. Yeah. But right. I think once you get somebody to kind of tell you what's going on, really, because, like, you can tell when somebody says, oh, no, it's great. You can kind of tell, like, maybe there's something going on that they're not, they don't want to tell you because they don't want to be that person who has that stigma on them. Because right. they like this industry, and if you have a stigma on you, you're not getting. It's already hard enough to find work as a woman in the beer industry. You don't right. want to right. ruin your chance at it because you called out a gross owner, you know. So thankfully for me and where I'm coming from, nobody in the beer industry is signing my paycheck. Yeah. So I am free to say basically whatever I want about what's going on and speak for whoever you know in yeah. this in this industry. So yeah. that's, it's a real safe space for me. So. Yeah, the only negative reaction to this podcast is when I do an episode like this. This is where I get a lot of pushback from listeners. I'm like, what are you scared of exactly well, that I'm talking about this thing? it's in so many industries. I yeah, mean, I've been and a it's not specific to the beer industry, I right? S- I sold cars. I was the only girl in a, in a, mm. at a car dealership, but the only, and that was really bad. I can't even tell you how bad that was. In the bar, in the bar industry back then, I you know in the eighties and nineties, like you kind of sort of expected, but I had the bar between me, and that helped a little bit. But then I had to deal with the own, you know owners and other people that I worked with, and I was the only girl on a, on, a, on an ambulance crew as well back, yeah. back then. And uh, mm. boy, yeah, 
Is well, it important to point the, out that it is all industries? Like it's just it's all industries. Uh, it every is. every it industry really has its problem. I wish, I, but but these these young women now are a hell done of a lot with it. No, they're a hell of a lot braver than mm. I was and a lot of my yeah my colleagues. There's a support there. structure in place mm. now. There's people that will believe you and it will fight for you. It's uh, a lot mm. better in that respect. Mm. And you're going to have the people that just don't want to turn the tide, but whatever. Mm. The, the, the thing with Tara's book, it's the first one that talks about the, the first book that does the global history of women and way back. I mean, maybe they weren't even putting it in writing or anything. I mean, when you were doing your research, how much of, I mean, obviously there was marginalization, but how much of like actually full on harassment or abuse was there? Did you find anything? As far as. I mean, like even like far back, I'm sure, there, I'm sure it was right worse in some ways but oh harassment and abuse in historical Mm -hmm. brewing yeah that's an interesting question um none Mm -hmm. because just because it wasn't getting once again right right Right. and so did it not happen was it not chronicled on and on and on the questions are endless and we may never know yeah. But yeah, I didn't come across any specific examples but like as you know because you were with me when I was writing some of this the further back you go, the more general and vague the narrative is. So there's, there's Do you no think way to know. To back as many years as you went, that the brewers for the household, that beer was just for that household. So there wouldn't have been as much discrimination. It would have been seen as that's your job as far as our family system and this is what you need to do so probably there wasn't as much discrimination other than it was that's your job yeah you know that's a great point that probably does address exactly what you just asked her linda which was every time brewing became an actual commercial endeavor meaning you left the house and went and had co-workers mm. in an off-site brewery it was men who did that. So the women historically who've brewed, right, have been in their house. So they didn't have all those people to sexually harass them like at work. And I'm air quoting because at work was like all the household Mm -hmm. stuff that they were doing. So probably industrialization is when, when it started getting interesting. Yeah. There's a little bit of interest in like, we had a house guest and you made a subpar beer or whatever, <laughs> and now you're going to get a talking to. You've brought shame on our family type seriously, situation. That's, seriously, that's probably yeah. where that about <laughs> came. And, and there were, you know, people who did develop reputations as being fabulous brewers. Um, for instance, Martha Washington, I mean, Martha Jefferson. Really? You know, living at Monticello in Virginia, you know, they had, she developed a fabulous reputation for being a good brewer. But what is interesting is... It's always like shit rolls downhill, right? <laughs> always, like <laughs> always, <laughs> always. So you know, getting back a couple minutes to what you were saying um, about you know the sexual harassment and women leaving the industry, and it got me thinking about women who work at breweries who lose their positions, for instance, because the brewer's wife is threatened, and or the brewer. And these are some of the stories that came out through Brian's Instagram page, like male owners or brewers being like, oh, she can't work here because she's hot. You know, like I can't control my own sexual impulses or my girlfriend is threatened. So the woman gets fired. And that's what it's like in history and not exactly the same story once again, because, you know, nobody's firing these these. Yeah cottage industry brewsters brewing for their families but if you look at greater historical movements whenever the thought of like a single woman threatened somebody in power people in power structures they would get banished they would you know not be allowed to own property they wouldn't be allowed to do things have the rights that they used to and it's this constant marginalization and alienation at best of women through society who take the brunt of everything through history. Yeah. On that note. (laughs) We did it again. Verizon was just named America's most reliable network by Root Metrics for the 16th time in a row. 
proving once again that nobody builds networks like Verizon builds networks. That's why we're building 5G right. That's why there's only one best network, Verizon. Best and most reliable based on root metrics reports from second half 2013 to first half 2021 of three operators on all network types combined, not specific to 5G networks. Dunkin' is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin' with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin'. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew. So let's talk about travel a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, I was going to say, like, this is a book where you're doing a lot of history research. So I imagine it's not a quick, quick process to go from I'm going to write this or book cheap. to the book <laughs> is out. Yeah, so this kind of ties into everything. Travel. The research, all that stuff. We went to Sweden. Uh, it was from Jessica Heydrich, and we went out there and uh, a brewery owner yeah, in Stockholm. She, yeah, and ironically, she, yeah, she was already in Finland, and then came over to Stockholm, and then Me, I just got Jessica. yeah, Tara, Tara. <laughs> and then I, uh, the, the, I've just got the chance to go to Finland for judging beer, oh, fantastic countries. So yeah, we, so we went to Sweden. Um, I drove her around Northern California to Judy Ashworth's. House. Chico to Sierra. Chico to Sierra. Of course, to Natalie in the Russian River several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, meet up with Nicole Ernie. Yeah, we've been to Puerto Rico together and mm-hmm. met brewery and bar owner. Washington, D.C. for the Smithsonian. Um, yeah, Teresa McCullough. Smithsonian, mm-hmm. Teresa McCullough, right? She's fantastic. Um, and Liz Garabachi from the Chicago Brew uh, Brewery Museum. Brew, the Brewery Museum? No. Brewery it's Museum. A- Chicago Brewery Museum? Uh, uh, <laughs> I forgot the name. He a brew museum or something. Anyway, the museum. Yes, museum. Museum. Thank you. Actually, it is. I think it's oh, the is Chicago it? Museum. Yeah. And, and she's having. Um, she's got a fabulous in-person and virtual conference in November about beer history and has some of the greatest yeah. beer historians in the world chiming in, which also then leads into sort of annual conference in Colonial Williamsburg Ooh, yeah. in Virginia, which is also a beer history conference. And I I will be speaking at that a couple times as well, as will well, Liz will be there. I don't think she's speaking. I need speaking, to find out but... if Mark Meltonville is coming. He Mark... is. He is coming. Oh, good. Please. I think so. I mean, I would double check. So Mark Meltonville, who you should totally talk to because he's <laughs> funny as hell and you would appreciate that, Ben. But he is also the um, uh, royal food and drink historian for the historic royal palaces. Oh. So he knows everything the queen likes to eat and drink and everything else and why. And all the queens going back, way, 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 way back in Kings. And he actually restores the kitchens at Hampton Court, the wow. Kew Palace, um, the Elizabethan kitchens. And every time they find something else that, oh, we thought this was a storage closet. It turns out it was King George's kitchen. And they, you know, and things like that. So he also does the... The um, the food modeling, like like you know the little plastic things and stuff, to, to period, and he comes to Williamsburg every year. Um, he's a British guy. So you're, I gotta introduce you because you'll okay. love him. He Please has do. A, he has a he has a YouTube uh, thing called Time Travelers. It's hysterical. But then he goes to Williamsburg, dresses in costume, colonial costume and everything, and brews in period equipment, um, recipes, um, and. So I think that he, I, hopefully he'll be there, but you'll, you definitely need to talk to him. That sounds fun. He is fun. Yeah, the, there's a guy, Frank Clark, at Colonial, William, Col- <laughs> Colonial Williamsburg. He's um, in charge of historic foodways, and he's very into brewing, and he's the guy who is connected with Mark. He's the guy who puts on this beer history conference every year mm, where they the talk a lot about like what were colonial settlers brewing they didn't really have hops at the time they couldn't really grow them here right at first so like what were they learning from the indigenous people to put into their beer um you know what were some of the like spices and herbs and crazy things that we would not eat at this point in our (laughs) in our human evolution um to make beer, you know, a lot of spruce, like you were talking a lot about mm-hmm. um, juniper having just yep. come from Finland, Finland, for instance. 
So a lot of those um, herbs and botanicals and such that were used in brewing for a long time before hops became um, the norm. <laughs> yeah, I, and this, people are making those beers with those now. They're very fun to just get in there and, and taste a juniper beer and stuff like that. I love it so much. They're doing like the sati. So I was, I was just the first American to judge the national sati competition, which is a, I, it's the oldest beer style still being brewed in the world. Did you say that's correct, Tara? That's what they were. I was told. Of course, yeah, I'm in Finland. Possibly. I think so. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, it's really old. When I would ask them how old, they're like really old. like <laughs> before the Viking. And I said Viking times, and they said before the Vikings. It's Stone Age. Yeah. And yeah. before that, yeah, it's yeah. not carbonated. It's not boiled, and they pour it over like juniper. These, the, but the juniper in Finland is like so aromatic, it's wow. much more so than here in the berries. But then what they all, every region had their own as well. And they had, they're growing sea buckthorn berries. They have currants mm. everywhere. There's lingon berries all over the ground there. Mm. Like, and rowan berries in the trees. And so they've used what they have. And the birch bark, they, it's like the trees are like that super white birch. Mm. And they would have that in there. It's like things that I had with like the birch too were like some of my favorite. Um, like a birch saison for the sauna. A sauna. The sauna. The sauna. <laughs> and Brian, though, at Moonlight. Oh, yeah. Has, what's the name of that beer he just gave us? Working for tips with Working the redwood uh, branches. Oh, from wow. Our local, nice. Local redwoods nice. there in Sonoma County. Not, uh, are there no hop? He's kind of anti hops. Brian at Moonlight in, in Sonoma. <laughs> yeah. what? And so he likes it when he can like brew with redwood tips and, and that's so fast. I love that. The foraging beer. The yeah. beers from it's foraging. All these yeah. layers it's so of amazing. Yeah. Flavor. I know. I would like to like somebody was talking about candy cap mushroom beer. Uh, somebody remember? Oh yeah, that? Tom was. Uh, Tom yeah, was. there's one up in Portland, the brewery made one. Oh man. Oh. Candy cap mushrooms, yeah. Fun. It was I was like, let's age it and see what happens. It was pretty good. It was very sweet. Oh, I, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Yes, those are do really you, yummy. Do you remember who it was? I, I know I interviewed him. <laughs> uh, All right. right. Alex Fuck comes on. Uh, it's, uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, they have the deer. They bought the rights to the, they have the rights to the Portland deer. They actually beat Portland in a lawsuit. Oh, I remember the, when yeah. there was a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yes. Um, yeah, I don't know what brewery See, it was. See, I have but. a couple. Like, there's one. It's in the space where Tahoe Mountain used to be in Truckee, and they're a forager uh, brewing, brewing with them what they can find. And, and then there's also one out 50, of... 50? Ill- Not no, 50. Okay. no, no, no. It's where Tahoe Mountain used to be on the other side of 80, and I cannot remember the name of that brewery right now, but fantastic. They're doing such a great job. And then I just got uh, some information on another one out of Illinois that's doing some foraging that I want to get to speak at and the of summit. Course, the guys in Arizona... I wish wilderness? Arizona Wilderness. Yeah. Nice. The brothers that do, they do for Fabulous. They yeah. Stuff. I, I wish I could think of the name of those two breweries I'm talking about crazy. right now. The ones in Illinois, if we're thinking of the right, if I'm thinking of the same one, they have a book about foraging yes. for ingredients. Yeah. And I can't remember yes. what they're called right now either. And, and there's a female owner yes, with it, that. And, yep. and so she'll be speaking at the summit this, this next oh, cool. year. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm All right, I got the information. It's Old Town Brewing. That had the mushroom cap. The oh, right on. Okay. Right on. Right. Nice. Well, well, done. Like well done, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Look, that sorry. was like really two minutes ago. Nice. I know. Look. <laughs> I can't be remembering That's everything. <laughs> well, I'm still a loser. I can't think of any yeah. stories I just brought up. So, um, Well, one thing. Oh, were you about to say Oh, something? I was just going to say also. I was trying to think of like where else some of the interesting places that we went for travel for the beer. Oh, China. Yeah. China. Yeah. Like, we both I been to China I, yeah, independently. We went se- yeah, separately. But you actually got to do a little bit of research there. I did. And also when you went, bitch, she got to go to the Guinness anniversary. <laughs> it was like the 250-year oh, anniversary party in Dublin. Very nice. Very and then nice. she went to, did you go to Trinity Library or something to go do some research yeah. there? She I didn't did. research, no, but I got to go and okay. see it. Because you went someplace research. to some library. Well, I went to the um, National Library of Scotland, Scotland that's it. for research. I went to the um, Finnish Literary Society Library for research, um, which was awesome. And that's how I say that COVID made this a very different book than it would have been yeah. because I was doing research we in the places I was going. We finally our first trip to Belgium. <laughs> I finally agreed Together. to go to Belgium. <laughs> and then there's that. And we were going to Because I had bad Sof- experiences Sophie. last time I was there. Yeah, Sophie. Uh-huh. And who was the other lady, that fantastic woman, Rose? 
Oh, Rosa Merks. Yeah. At Leafman's, who's in her late okay. 90s and is still living. And she ran Leafman's for a long, long, long time. Her son, Olaf, was running Duval. Mort got for a time, but I don't think he is anymore. He just got in trouble. Anyway, whatever. But she's <laughs> really prominent. And yes, we are going to go see her. We had a bunch of stuff set up for that and then COVID. And I was like, damn it, I almost finally got her to Belgium. I know, she almost but, got me to Belgium. But, it would have been, but you're right, it would have been a different book because that Europe stuff, a lot of it got cut out. Like, we were lucky to go to Sweden. She had done a lot of stuff, um, you know, because she also, you know, d- does a travel for other writing that she does, too, for magazines and um, other beer and spirits literature. She gets invited to everything. Yeah. I did get to go to Germany and do a lot of research as part of a work trip I was already on. That was like obviously pre-COVID. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting to contemplate the different direction things might have gone in book-wise it's had I been to other places book. to research. Yes. This yeah. means yeah. there's a part two. Right. Yes, I hope or re- so. A revision there will be. or updates. And yeah. 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 Always updating. Yeah. Always. The new version right. 2.0, right. whatever you're going to do. There's so many more stories. Yes. Always. So much more to write about. And more will come out of the woodwork, literally. Oh, as that totally. book comes out and totally, they'll be like yeah. what yeah. about this what about that you know? mm-hmm. well you know one really cool thing that was actually that made the book much more difficult to, to narrow down and write is that between the time I decided to write the book and the time I wrote the proposal which took a couple of years and then um, writing the final draft The number of women to talk about had changed drastically. So whereas when I first started, it was much more clear cut as to who needed to be included in the book because there were people who were known to be the, you know, the pioneers at various times in the industry. And then a couple years later, there were women everywhere all over the world and that just hadn't been the case a couple years earlier when I started and so that was a neat thing to witness and uh, during your talk earlier today you had mentioned a pretty cool spot in Philadelphia and then a certain someone uh, still making beer into their 70s with no apprentice Oh, I'm just going to have you repeat Doris. stories I'm Sister not Doris at yeah. Abbey. in Germany in yep. Bavaria yeah mm-hmm. Uh, Philly, are you talking about? Yeah, I think Carol Stout, like, Carol Stout yeah. in Pennsylvania. Oh. I feel like there was something in, you're like, when you're in Philadelphia, you got to do this thing. Oh, the Penn Museum. Oh, yeah, the University of Penn Museum. What if, and Dr. Pat, that there wrote Ancient Ales and Uncorking the Past. It's his was his first book, I believe. Yeah. Dr. Pat has done a lot of research on ancient alcohol and doing all sorts of testing of artifacts found in the field to like carbon date ancient yeast ancient yeah and vessels um you know is there beer stone inside that they can scrape and determine that there was actually barley beer in that vessel Um, and he's at the Penn museum and herlinda and i got to go when she visited me that was a highlight for you of the philly trip and so, right. So I he saw the, mi- the, the yeast uh, or, or like the dust for the Midas dust for the, the beer oh, yeah. that he did with Sam Kelsey, but actually from King Midas's tomb. Seriously. We, yeah. were, we were both kind of fangirling over that. We dirt. were super fangirling. <laughs> yeah. He held up a baggie with dirt from King Midas's tomb. You think it was the 80s or something. We're like, whoa. <laughs> What's in the bag? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, nice. And that he was involved in because they, <laughs> Sam Calgione from Dogfish Head and this guy, Dr. Pat McGovern, had brewed this ancient, Archaeologist. Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. Had brewed um, a beer based on recipes that they thought would have been like around King Midas' time. Mm-hmm. And they did one for China. From chi- from they China. did a sati one, actually. Did they? Yep. Mm-hmm. Or that might have been without Dr. Pat. But oh, okay. Dogfish Head has made two sati... Beer. No carbonation at all, too? Uh, or they were they... interpretations. I don't know if okay. they were carbonated. Because Americans you know? just can't remember. handle like the no carb. Right. I mean, right. They, they're yeah. actually they're all about no carbs these days. But it's more like <laughs> keto no carbs. Yeah. Uh, but no carbonation, they can't handle Can't handle it, no. <laughs> yeah. And you did ask about one other. Th- that was oh, a yes. two-part Carol question. Uh, Sister Doris. Well, that's another um, place where Linda and I have both been independently of each other. Sister Doris is the last brewing nun alive in Europe 
And so you've got this like 1200 year history of nuns brewing in Europe and she's, they've all died and not new nuns have not become brewers and sister Doris is, she's it. She's like 70 years old. Yep. She's hmm. at like 70. Still and time to find an apprentice. I know. That's what I'm thinking too. I think there's yeah. a lot of women. I, I think that, I don't know if they have to become nuns or if they can, well, the guy is like, no. there's a guy apprenticing under her. So I wonder, I, I would think that there's some woman would be willing to go and live at this beautiful convent and eat their awesome bread that they grow the grain for themselves and make the bread and everything and go help take over. And then maybe when there is a nun, a younger nun that wants to learn. So, cause sister Doris said that all, the, all these young nuns want to do is, um, uh, pray and eat and not work hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that is annoying to her. <laughs> she, was, she was so like annoyed by it. Like she, and she loved it, telling this group of women, the pink boot from the pink boot society that we were all there. And there was 16 of us on a bus for nine days. Uh, and I think nine of the women were brewers. Brewsters, Braumeisters, can't remember how we said it in German, but um, so she had she had never seen that like, that many women brewers, oh, wow. especially at her brewery, yeah. and she was like she thought she was just going to do kind of a meet and greet and show us a couple of things, and she was like, come down and have beers with me, and she's a special seller, come down and have beers with me, and she brought out bread that the nuns make themselves and they grow the grain and everything. She brought out, you know, uh, you know, meats that they did themselves, charcuterie and, you know, bologna and stuff. And actually, I guess it wouldn't be that there. It would be sausage probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she brought all that stuff back because she couldn't believe there was all these women brewers okay. at yeah. her place. And we were all sitting around this table in a cellar that's her special room. And she was so happy that and she was like they were like this like, like Denise Jones who's also in Tara's book they were discussing with the interpreter and Terry of you know yeast and things like that she uses and she like loved science. it yeah Pure science yeah, she was like <laughs> so happy I, I think Denise Jones should go take Sister Doris's spot Denise Jones is who brought me to Sister Doris's in the oh, first place well, see there you go <laughs> and Laura Ulrich uh, that was one of the co-founders of Pink Boots she was totally you know super Mm. into that also but yeah she's at stone I'm sure um, obviously Laura's in the book too I'm sure Laura's all over the book <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Terry like Garndor her. founder of the Peak Boot Society is in there I'm trying to think of who else is there because like as people listen to this podcast if they want to go look up some of these brewers as well as get Tara's book Carol Stout T tell people about T Carol Stout well Carol Stout is the D yeah. Yeah. S T O U D T. She's the second woman in contemporary history to own her own brewery, contemporary American history, own her own brewery, and be the brewmaster at the same time. Um, she's outside Philly. She just retired recently, but she's she, like when people think of women in beer very often, at least on the East Coast, that's the one name they know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she she's a fabulous mentor and example well, for other and, women. Well, I didn't know about her till you told me about her. Mm. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there that won't know until you they get this book. But they you know, and then you and then you start exploring. You start, you know, like you know, you right. read Dr. Pat's book, the Ancient Ales books, and you just start going to people's breweries and you know. Well, and that's such a fun. I think important part of the forgotten history part that there are so many contemporary women who have been forgotten, like mm -hmm. Melly Pullman, for instance, who, as far as I, all of my research shows, was the first brewery co-owner and brewmaster in contemporary America. I keep saying the word contemporary. You know what I mean? She was only there a short time. She worked at Wasatch. She was a co-founder of Wasatch in, in uh, Utah. And uh, she vanished from the beer world for like 30 years. Thank Nobody years. had ever heard of her. And now she's back. Mm -hmm. And Beth Hartwell, who was co-owner, co-founder of the brewery that became Pyramid. Um, That's nuts. Disappeared from the brewing world. And, and I don't say this to give myself credit but like 
I worked really hard to find her, and then I, I kind of resurrected her, right? Like, I introduced her to all these brewing women, and she hadn't been part of the beer scene in, again, decades. And so it's really nice to be able to, like, give these women the attention that they never got. Yes. Yeah. Because, their, as we said before, their husbands tended to be taking the spotlight. And then now, here they are or their getting partners. their own due. Like New their Albion. Partners. Like New yeah. Albion. Right, like right. The partners. You know, everybody thinks Jack McAuliffe, Jack McAuliffe, which Jack McAuliffe is cool. We love Renee. But Susie and what was the other lady? Jane. Jane from New Albion were instrumental in getting New they Albion They funded going. the entire operation. Jack didn't put a cent of his own in at the beginning. And huh. nobody has ever heard of the two women who co-founded New Albion with Jack. And you ended up interviewing them, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. To get, <laughs> like, A, find them. We, I mean, I was, like, asking other like people, like, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to ask Brian Hunt because he worked at, you know, I'm like, I'm asking all these people. And she's like, we had to, like, do a search to get a hold of Susie for you. And I think Teresa McCullough. Tom Akatali yeah. put us in touch. And then it took several years for her to agree to do the interview. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't until yeah. Teresa McCullough at the That's Smithsonian it. interviewed her, vouched for me that oh, she yep. agreed wow. to do it. It took, like, probably four years of emailing Susie to win her over. So she would talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Jane never, uh, never ended up talking to me. Some people didn't want to be found. Yeah. And we've actually found Jane. I know where she is, and she won't talk to me. She lives right by you. She won't talk to me. Yeah. Some people, it's just like, that's a history. That's an old me. I don't want to. Yeah. There's probably a lot of wounds from that that you're like, I don't want to reopen them. But I don't care about your book yeah. enough to do that. Yeah. And wow. that's the reality of anything like this where you're doing a big project where you're going back decades to people who have been lost to the sands of time some of them don't want to be unearthed and that's fine they have their reasons maybe one day they'll change their mind maybe that's you know a version down the road but maybe when they see your book like oh maybe it's something I would want to talk to right they could see how beautifully written it is so and maybe respectful. she'll be a book too <laughs> we should mail her a book actually mail her Just do a it. book that's I a great, like I'll, that I'll, idea I'll, I'll, or do I'll take one of the stack to her you sign it for her and I'll or I'll find a way to do it like where I don't look like a stalker I'm like sneaking up with the mm -hmm. package There's you got it book. do it do it what's in that box <laughs> any right. other questions for us Mr. Ben I don't have any we've gone far too long you I guys know, have I'm things sorry. to do I'm, no that's my fault <laughs> oh, I no, have this a, it's right in front of me I can just like cut it off and I didn't do it and that's my fault uh, Women's Places in the Brew House coming out September 21st through Chicago Pr uh, Review Press uh, I didn't say this at the beginning. You can get a discount on that. Use the promo code BarleyMe25 to get 25% off if you order directly from Chicago Review Press. Really? Well Look at done. that. Thank nice. you. Tie Wait, in. was there a pro Did you give the promo code? Yeah, BarleyMe25. Um, and I want to let everybody know also that uh, we will have more book signings set up for Tara and her book. Um, and readings and hopefully some tastings to go along with those throughout the country and hopefully in Europe and other places too as as you know things op you know are as safer things open up safer yep. and um, yeah. so be looking for you know in the Bay Area uh, Russian River Brewery for sure we'll be doing one at Windsor we met with Natalie about that already full anchor sale anchor brewing anchor nice. I want I'm talking to Omnivore Books um, Copperfields Books. Also, you know, check for your independent bookstores yes. also. For Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Ask for it if it's not there. Yep. Yes. A woman's place is in the brew house. We're going to go up to P Pike's, hopefully, in Pike Seattle. Pike in Seattle, yep. Pike's Brewing Company in Seattle because Roseanne Finkel, very instrumental in all. Let's talk about Roseanne, actually, real quick. Because, Rose <laughs> because they brought Belgian yeah. beer into America. They sure did, yes. Oh, and also, the, like, the, when they were doing their... They have a, that, this, this uh, beer museum in the Pikes Brewing yes. at the fa really famous Pikes Market in Seattle. Yep. It's in, in Pike Place. Yeah, in Pike Place. And you can go into that. They just remodeled it, made it even bigger. I haven't seen the remodel. I think you have. And they would do a fundraising beer and day also for Planned Parenthood every year. Which was yes, really cool. That's true, yes. Yeah. But Roseanne, I mean, and Charles, they brought Belgian beer into the. Yeah, if you like Belgian beer, you. There are a small handful of people to thank, and they are definitely primo among them. They brought in some of the first family Belgian, family-owned Belgian beers in um, in the country. 
and Sammy's, they were very instrumental. They also had some some family-owned um, British and German breweries. So Se- mm. Iinger Celebrator, thanks to the mm. Finkels, um, all the Sammy Smith. Love it. Taddy Porter, Nut Brown, Yum. Samuel Smith, yummy. <laughs> that's that's Nut thanks to Roseanne all, yeah. Finkel too. So yeah, that's they they Roseanne passed last year, right. but Charles Finkel's still around and, and Pike Brewing in Seattle is is their place. All right, so before we get out of here, besides the book, where else can people find you, Tara? My website is under construction. Yet that In is the best place. For? Yes, <laughs> um, for all the new exciting book events, it's taranurin.com. That's T A R A N U R I N dot com. And her Instagram, which will, of course will announce also that the website's ready and book signings. Yes, and, and on social, I'm yeah, on taranurin everywhere. Yeah. Please Facebook follow. And Thank you. And 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 you can order the book um, if you don't see it in the bookstore on like all the booksellers. Amazon, Chicago Review Press, Bookshop.org is a good indie website, indie bookstore website. And anywhere else people can find you? Like, uh, I know you're not just writing this book. You write other articles, oh, things like that. Forbes. Yeah, published in Forbes, no big deal. Um, <laughs> right? I have a, uh, a page on Forbes. It's probably easiest to just say, like, search for terranurn.com Forbes. My page will come up because... It's not a simple URL. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can find my stories there, um, various and sundry other um, online and print publications. So, so I don't know. I think Google's your friend when it comes to, to the right? sort of thing. Yeah. 750. 750 daily, yeah, Vine like Pair, forms. et cetera. Thank you for And asking. Herlinda, oh, you're very welcome. Herlinda Laroth, where can people find you? I am Beer Golf Girl Travels on Instagram, uh, Beer Golf Girl on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, and you can actually find um, our radio broadcast, is live radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. in Santa Rosa Pacific time, and then that gets converted by an agency in San Francisco, in L.A. or something that they, they cut out the commercials and the traffic and all that, and it's on podcast on Spotify and uh, app, um, iTunes and all those as well. So you can, And that's Brewhaha, B-R-E-W-H-A-H-A. And um, unfortunately, in, as we're talking about this Me Too and misogyny, you'll see what I'm talking about when you see how it's titled. So anyway, not my doing. But, um, mm. but I, pick, I do book all the, um, all the guests and set up the interviews and do a lot of traveling. Um, so, oh, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. I actually post a lot of like when um. I'm doing beer judging, like in Finland or Italy, Portugal. Poland, California State, although I didn't do that this year because I was in Finland. Always up to something. Yes, she sure. is. <laughs> even, when I, even when I try to sit, even when I try, I'm no. looking at the books like on the, like Dr. Pat's book. So he, I, he, I got three books of his signed by him and I can't, I don't have the time to sit down and read it. I, like, I'm hoping I have time to read Tara's book when it comes She's out. a busy girl. <laughs> She's a then, busy girl. Yeah, because then we're going to start, you know, with the book tour. So um, I would like a little bit of time to do some reading and do some laundry because I've been back in Helsinki just a few days and mm-hmm. I'm like jet lag showing jet lag <laughs> I've already done like a book site I've done the, like tra- travels to the Sierras two days of public health I've also been working in a vaccine clinic um, through the pandemic trying to get us back to you know so all I'm going to tell you guys please get your vaccine Get your done. family and friends to get their vaccines so we can get on to beer festivals, traveling. Yes, we've in got person. traveling to do, and this is getting in our way. Yes. Everybody needs their yes. vaccine. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then if we get hurt while we're traveling, we really, really need some beds free just in case. So let's get everybody well. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. And most McCann with the Women's International Beer Summit and yes. Queen of Beer, my preferred Pilsner glass, by the way. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> which is lovely. We're Women's International Beer Summit on Instagram, which is international is the I-N-T-L in the middle instead of international spelled out. Uh, Facebook page is Women's International Beer Summit. And 
That's how you find us right now, or WCFA.beer. And then you can find Barley Me across social media at Barley and Me Pod. Email questions, comments, concerns to BarleyMePod at gmail.com. Go to BarleyMePod.com to find absolutely nothing worth looking at. Uh, don't forget to check out my basketball and beer podcast, Please Dunk Responsibly. We're comparing players to beers, beers to players. It's the off season. We're going to go nuts. Who knows what we're going to talk about nice. until the season comes back. And of course, I'm also engineering a advice podcast called It's Crazier in My Business with Becky Lynn and Tavi answering listener questions, which I think I have to go record right after this. Right on. So, Cheers, people. Yeah, uh, there's been an episode... I was wrong. It's episode 154 of Barley and Me with Tara Nerd. Thank you so much. Thank you. Helinda Ross, thank you so much. Yes. Melissa McCann, thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks so much for listening. Uh, get home safe. Has it been a while since you flipped that thermostat from heat to cool? Turn to the experts at Griffith Energy Services before you do for an $88 AC start and check to make sure your AC is in tip-top shape. Griffith specializes in carrier, but services all brands. Visit GriffithEnergyServices.com today. Your local carrier expert. That's GriffithEnergyServices.com. License number MDHVACR01-2278. Griffith Energy Services. Doggone dependable. Dunkin' is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin' with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin'. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew.